for the panto next week. I think it's Jack and the Beanstalk. I absolutely love the pantomime and I have an excuse now because I have a little girl but your one's a little too young isn't she? Our daughter is far too young though she's so advanced she probably will be doing it very soon <laughs> the way course. she gets into everything. It's in the genes. It, well I'm not about that it's <laughs> just for my mother uh, but amid all the laughs on stage uh, there's a serious financial message message uh, pantos can bring in up to 40 percent of a theatre's annual income. Felicity Simper reports from the Towngate Theatre in Basildon. The final scene of Aladdin. It's this year's panto at the Towngate Theatre and it's a crowd puller. I just think it's so good. It's like, it, it brings more happiness to everyone. It's like, I don't know, it just, it's better than just going to the cinema. I think it's aimed for all ages and stuff. So I've been to, well, I go to pantomime quite a lot and I find it quite fun. The adults just find it sheer and it takes them back to their childhood, I reckon. Because for the cinemas and everything, it's all acting, so maybe it just has that sort of effect on them. But it's not just smiles on faces that are important. Staff at this theatre say pantomime is vital to its survival. It, it makes a big contribution, it really does. Uh, but the Towngate is actually quite lucky in that it has quite wide community support. So uh, we could replace it with other things, but traditionally panto at Christmas is at the local theatre. People are coming back and back and back, so it means that it's becoming a stronger and stronger and more important part of our economic um, programme each year. The pantomime provides 40% of the theatre's annual income. That means 25,000 people buying tickets, and with more people attending over the last three years, they're predicting a 5% increase this season. There's an awful lot of double entendre and, um, and local references, but I, I find Basildon, um, and I, you know, Essex in general, the people, the spirit of people in Essex is they love to laugh at themselves. They love a local reference, um, you know, the, uh, and we've got you know, loads of it. Um, so the adults laugh at that, and the kids are laughing because they don't get it, but the kids are laughing because their adults are, la are laughing. And local restaurants are also laughing. A good crowd at the Panto means more business. So it's not just good for beating the winter blues, it also helps the local economy. Felicity Simper, BBC Look East, Basildon. Now, Such Susie fun. has just confessed something to me. You were in pantomime. It was a very long time ago. Go on, then. I what was were you Dick in? Whittington a very, very long time ago. <laughs> Slapped my thigh quite a lot. Yeah. All right, Dick. Uh, this was in another life. <laughs> I would pay good money to see pictures of that, I tell you. <laughs> They're all hidden very, very far away from here. Anyway, let's go on. OK, stay with Christmas. Uh, we're moving from stage to cinema, or at least cinefilm and photographs. Because last night we asked for your memories of Christmas's past, and as always, you came up with some real crackers. Here's Mike Liggins. Rocking around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop. Thanks very much for getting in touch about Christmas past. Now, I'd like to start with a little bit of a tearjerker. This is an email from Lane Andrews, originally from Stevenage. Now, back in 1957, Lane had a new racing bike for Christmas. I was so pleased, it made me cry, he says. But sadly, the bike had been bought on higher purchase. His parents couldn't afford the payments, and the bike was going to be repossessed. To make matters worse, his older brother could afford the payments and he took the bike from me, says Lane. Thank goodness there's a happy ending. Three years later, Lane saved up enough money to buy his own racing bike. Roger Blackwell from Norwich got in touch via Twitter to tell me about an old home movie filmed by his uncle Charles. This was 1965. That's Roger on the right wearing a tie, as you did in those days. No iPods, laptops or computer games. Entertainment was acting out TV adverts of the time. And Roger remembers some good presents, too. A rocket firing tank, things like that when I was a youngster. I remember that. Oh, a bike, one year. Yeah, lots of different things. We always got nice presents, yeah. Talking of top presents, this is Phil Hubbard, who lives near South End with his collection of classic 1970s toys. He has Flight Deck, which I had for Christmas one year and loved. It broke eventually, worth a fortune on eBay now. Thanks very much for getting in contact. It's been such good fun that we might very well do it again before Christmas. 
I love old cine. I, I love. I used to love Christmas because it was the best toys with, at that time of year. And and I remember it was Star Wars when I was a kid. Oh yeah, and, and that's all back, isn't it? Star it's Wars? all back. Yeah, but mine are just in bits now. Oh, They're not worth anything. <laughs> oh dear. Should we get the weather? Yes, I think we should. Yes. <laughs> I'm waiting Alex here patiently. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot you were here. You are here, so give us, give us the weather I'm as you're here. here. <laughs> um, the weather is about to throw all it can at us over the next 24 hours or so. Rain, sleet, snow, you name it, it's going to come our way. Strong winds as well. The current picture is actually rather a calm one. Um, a cloudy scene, uh, any showers have sort of moved away to the east. You'll notice in the early hours of the morning, this band of rain appears. Now, the temperatures for tonight down to one degree Celsius are low. So not as cold as it has, has been, that's 34 degrees in Fahrenheit. And the winds west and northwesterlies, moderate, generally moderate in strength. So if we look ahead to tomorrow, it's this area of low pressure that's going to cause the problems. It's pushing this cold front towards us. It's going to bring some strong winds. You'll see the isobars closely packed, indicating those strong winds. But what it's really going to do is bring some much colder air from the Arctic. So first of all, we've got rain to deal with. Uh, the big change for tomorrow is a dramatic drop in temperatures during the day. So that's going to mean any rain that could turn to sleet or snow instantly freezing, making conditions quite dangerous and icy on the roads. So if we deal with the morning first, the rain becoming quite widespread across the region. And these are the temperatures for about 9 o'clock tomorrow. So not too bad. 4 or 5 degrees Celsius are high. The winds mainly westerly, light to moderate in strength. Then if we forward on to the rest of the day, that rain generally starts to clear. But with the colder air that that cold front's introduced, it could turn to sleet or snow. Behind it, some snow showers, but those snow showers mainly confined to parts of Norfolk and Suffolk. Then if we bring up the temperatures for 5 o'clock by the afternoon, down to below zero for most places so some places seeing a drop of six degrees celsius and the winds become more northwesterly and they pep up a bit as well becoming fresher in strength so if we look ahead to the weekend an area of low pressure this is another area of low pressure coming in from the west that's likely to bring some snow so it's sort of the beginning of a, a cold snap with some snow showers on the way as well. So it's rain to deal with tomorrow. The icy roads are a real problem. A very cold day for, th for Friday. Temperatures are not getting above freezing all day, but dry. Then on Saturday, that low pressure from the west brings in some snow showers, and then they continue into Sunday, mainly affecting the east. A cloudy day for Monday. Some severe frosts on the way. Back to you. Looks pretty cold to me. Alex, we've just had a call from a lady who wants to know when you mentioned that first overnight temperature, is that tonight or tomorrow night? Yes, that's actually, well, tomorrow night. So Thursday, that's the daytime temperature, and then the nighttime temperature, Thursday into Friday night. Lovely. Thank you very Does much. Does it matter? It's all cold. Just a quick mention about <laughs> tomorrow night's programme. I've been to meet 10 year old James Howe, who was involved in a horrific accident in July when the car he was in was hit by a train at a level crossing. At the time, James's parents were told to prepare themselves for the worst. But as you can see, he's defied the odds and has made an amazing recovery. James's story on Look East tomorrow.